Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Integrator, and uh, once again we are going to put an overlay on a Juno 106. Now this Juno 106 has been upgraded to a QV 106, and uh, as you can see inside there's the little red QV 106, um, and of course this is for another client, somebody in New York, as a matter of fact. So I'm just uh, preparing the front panel. I'm using a little bit of IPA, that's isopropyl alcohol. Um, if you were just cleaning your front panel, I don't suggest that you use IPA. Um, look, it's got a little bit of the red from that ink just came off on the because of the IPA. So uh, you know, it's not not the greatest thing for your paint job, but it is really good about removing oil and dust. And there's that clean. Now, I'm going to show you a technique that I've come up with. And this is uh, Cinegrator's technique for putting on an overlay. And it's a little bit different than the one in the manual, uh, the piece of paper that comes with the, the overlay. But before I even get into that, um, this is a totally stock colored QE106. And uh, so it's going to have the QE106 overlay. And I've removed the, um, the panel PCB because I always do that, because as you know, when I, well, here, let me show you. Um, part of my process, put that aside for a sec, part of my process is to actually service all of the faders, um, and the ones that are janky get taken out and actually dismantled and reassembled um, and re-lubed, and then I have these custom neoprene covers, which I have a new technique now. I actually am using a, uh, a computer-controlled plotter cutter to uh, cut uh, basically what's waterproof vinyl. And then the wa waterproof vinyl provides a completely accurate template for the neoprene that goes underneath. So this is actually neoprene with waterproof vinyl on the cover. And then once that's in place, I use a, a very fine rotary cutter by hand because obviously neoprene is too thick to cut with a um, a vinyl cutter. So uh, that's basically what I do in order to get this. And then, of course, I have to bond these down. That hasn't happened yet. And here are all the buttons. Uh, and again, these buttons are over brand new tack switches, which were installed. An awful lot of work, really, to take what's essentially a stock original board. And then, and uh, you'll notice too, it's actually mirror clean and not covered in gunk. Um, solder flux and the like, because I also give the board a thorough cleaning front and back and remove all the tack switches and replace it, and it takes a really long time, actually. Um, but that's part of my process when I do a rebuild, and that's just the way I roll, and I recommend everyone else do it, too. Really, honestly, it's probably going to be the only time you get inside the synth in the course of its life, so why not give it the proper treatment, I always say. So I'm just going to put this aside. Hoping that I'm not in the shot. Okay, good, I'm not. Because um, it's not about me, it's about the synth. And um, here is the Kiwi 106 overlay, as I said. And uh, as you can see, it's going to look pretty impressive uh, when properly installed. But uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to take the moment here um, and do a little commercial for something else, and also maybe perhaps you want to call it a introduction, or perhaps even a, um, a mini review. What if this wasn't a QE 106? And so, consequently, I don't have all of these extra functions uh, that I, you know, that come along with the QE 106. What if it's not a QE 106? What if it's a Juno 106? Well, there's an awful lot of Juno 106s out there that have harmed front panels, ones with scratches, dings, prison tattoos, you know, an owner decided to use a Dremel to put his name on it, you know, or perhaps a serial number or whatever. Um, and you get it, and it's got rust forming in all those open wounds, and it's got crayon or somebody's used marker on something that won't come out. How do you fix that? Um, well, here's how you fix it. This is a Juno 106 overlay by Synth Graphics. And uh, if you take a look here, you'll see it is in fact a complete replacement for the front panel. 
and you'll see this it's the same classic Juno 106 not only just the logo but also there's no extra screening it's the exact original screening from the from the 106 and so um, very recommended if you want to do a quick cosmetic upgrade on your Juno 106 and you're not if either you're saving for a Kiwi or you don't want to have a Kiwi you want to keep it as a stock Juno this is what you buy and it costs the same as the uh, Kiwi 106 overlay um, and that's pretty cool so thumbs up to Synth Graphics for listening to the people and, uh, and listening to me because I bugged him about it too um, you know I used to be just a Juno 106 rebuilder before I became the Kiwi 106 guy so um <clears throat> definitely something I believe in. Anyway, let's get back to what I'm what I'm going to show you here. Uh, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit closer so you can see some of the method to my madness. Uh, and while I'm zooming in, I'll bring this up a little bit. And hopefully, you're going to be able to catch what I'm, what I'm laying down. Now, the technique that I use is I remove the panel board. That much is what I already talked about. And with the panel board gone, you can now line up all the holes in the overlay with the existing holes in the metalwork. And that's really important because, um, you know, Roland's tolerances were not 100%, uh, you know, like anything else. I th I th this is before the era of CAD CAM, so we we're talking about stamping machines and whatnot. So um, uh, there is little, little slop in there. So this this overlay does a fantastic job um, catching all of the uh, openings within a certain tolerance. But uh, you will find with your individual synth uh, front panel, there are slight variances. And so what you want to do is you want to compromise all of these whole slots and also the ones around the LEDs. Now, I have here, this is a little trick taken from the Chroma Polaris panel membrane job, uh, which I cover in re redoing the panels uh, for my Chroma Polaris in a different playlist. And it's painter's tape, painter's masking tape. So it's almost like it has post-it note style stickiness as opposed to the real real deal. Um, and you want to use this. I've already cut a f um, ripped a few pieces off up here so I can just do this. Once you've got the alignment, and remember if you have the alignment a little bit out of skew what's going to happen is the buttons are going to stick in the hole. And so what I'm doing now is I am just, I'm just dropping down a couple of pieces of tape just to hold it in place. Too. while I go through this and uh, I'm taking a look here I'm seeing I can see two little white uh, yeah you can't see that can you all right sorry about that gotta loosen this ratchet off a little bit now we're at an angle but that's okay over here I can see two little white dots and that's because of the original Juno 106 had some lines there and those white dots because I've used the tape I can lift this up. So that is actually a little bit high for what I want. So I'm going to pull my tape up and then slide it down just a little bit so I can't see those little white dots anymore. And now I'm going to bring the tape back down. Okay. Um, all right. That's looking fairly impressive. So now I'm just going to put some a bit of tape over here and as I'm putting the tape down um, I'm actually not going to go too crazy on the other side let me just go back crank up there we go okay good 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 um, so I'm not I'm not going too crazy on this side it's, it's all on this side and it's all on this side for a good reason basically what I'm trying to do is ensure that this side is free because this is going to be the side I'm going to lift. I'm going to show you in a second. So I'm treating the the center here as basically where I'm going to do my my cut. I'll show you that in a sec. So uh, I'm just checking out 
just the overall alignment here. And because I've got the synth in pieces, and I even have the ends off, because again, we're, we're going to be replacing those with Sapel. I'm looking from the inside now just to verify that in this regime, everything is lining up nicely from the inside. And there's no situation with the overlay. All right, I have to pull it down just a little bit, in fact. There. Just to make myself satisfied. Okay. I think enough with the tape here. All right. Okay, good. Um, so let's move on to the next step. And this is the overlay I'm applying. This is the Kiwi 106 overlay. Pull this off. Right. So let me show you the next the next thing we're going to do. Um, peel up this half. Now remember, this half is totally okay. And I'm actually going to just remove the backing here. Oh, shouldn't have cut my nails today. Ah, oh, there we are. Okay. So once again, you don't want to get sticky fingers on this backing. Okay. Got that like that. I'm actually going to a little piece of this painter's tape and just catch the corner here so it doesn't doesn't peel down okay so that's what I did I just got a little piece there just holding the corner and I'm gonna take my scissors and ever so gently cut the backing on this side. So the, now the backing is out and we're ready to actually start applying this. Um, so now I'm going to remove my tape, like that, and now the masking painter's tape has held it down, so now I'm going to smooth, I'm basically pulling it taut, and Smoothing it down, smoothing it down, smoothing it down. Just like that. Oh, let me zoom out. Oops, let me just zoom out a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay. Oh, if I only had a camera crew. Um, all right, so I'm now I'm just going to look inside and verify that that is all good from the inside, and what I am seeing looks good from the inside. Uh, but I'm also seeing over here um, that I really do want to make sure that on this side, on this side, uh, that it doesn't ride up too high. Um, Looks, looks mostly pretty good. Okay, so, so, we now have half of this bonded down to our satisfaction, and you saw that I didn't have to do any pulling up or anything like that. It just came down, and looks good. So now I'm just going to pull off the painter's tape that was holding this in alignment, because now the sticky backing on the other side is holding it proper. So I'm just going to remove all these other bits. Like that. Okay, and let me um, reposition this a little bit and zoom in a little bit because the real action now is going to be happening on the left side. Okay, that that's fairly good. Okay, so so now, as you recall, here we go. So I'm laying out pretty nice, and I'm just going to lift it up like this and go to the half that I, actually, you know what, I'm just going to start it on this, this end, rather than go digging for it. We'll be able to pull it out, no problem. Alright, there we are. And 
go back and come in clear. Taking care not to tear it or leave any backing paper behind. And this is a repeat of what I did on the other side. And uh, as I said, I'm just making sure that it does not ride too high. So bring it down. So now I'm smoothing it, smoothing it, smoothing it, smoothing it, making sure there's no air bubbles in there. This is nice though because the. I, oop! Not an air bubble. I was actually going to say, oh yeah, that's an air bubble. Hang on a sec, folks. me. Now again, look how tough this stuff is. I mean, this is really a wicked product because if we were dealing with, um, you know, printed vinyl or anything like that, it would stretch at this point and uh, it would be game over. But because this is Lexan, we can do that. All right. Okay. So there it is in place good and uh, okay let's uh, let's go in for the glory shot let's have a look at this closer I'm going to sorry for that violent shock to the system as I pull that out but let's have a look inside just to verify everything okay can you see just how nicely that's lined up and you cannot see the edges of the overlay through the hole and let's take a look at it from the front then And I got to apologize too. I'm using a bright light that's shining down, a kind of a brutal one, and it's a spotlight type and fluorescent. Uh, it makes the overlays look a lot shinier than they actually are in person. But you know what? I actually like it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, look, see how they, it just lined up with the original um, LCD cover, and uh, yeah. There's not going to be any issues here. Nope, there won't be any issues here. So there you have it. One Kiwi 106 overlay in place. And uh, this is going to be a very impressive looking unit when we're, when we're done, which will be fairly soon because, as you know, I've been working round the clock to get these Kiwi 106s out into the hands of rockers and electronica types and anybody who wants to make music with one of these fine instruments so that's my commercial and um you know carry on everybody and really uh check out the new juno 106 overlay from kiwi uh from synth graphics <laughs> uh, here we go too many commercials at one time remember to check this out too because that's pretty impressive um and there you have it this is disintegrator Signing off.